Greetings to all in the love and light of the one infinite creator. And welcome to the first episode of the Seattle Law of One Study Group podcast. This is the first episode of what I hope will be a fun series of videos with a good blend of spiritual wisdom, love, and humor. My name is Jonathan Tong, and I am facilitator for the Seattle Law of One Study Group. We can be found in the list of study groups on the LNL Research website shown on your screen. We do also have a Facebook group, and we do meet on Zoom twice a week at the time shown on your screen. You can contact us at the email shown on your screen if you would like to join any of our Zoom sessions or any of our Q&As with Jim McCarty or other members of the LNL Research Channeling Team, which we do roughly once a month. You can find our channel on uh, YouTube. Go ahead, click the subscribe button if you would like to get updates on them. So what is this podcast series about? Uh, our hope for this podcast series is to provide interesting conversations and insights into topics of interest related to the law of one. We hope to share some passages, interesting passages from channeling sessions that you may have not seen before or thought about before. We hope this podcast will be really different from any other kind of law of one or metaphysical podcast out there. Hopefully better and more fun and quite a bit funnier, we hope. Uh, and for folks who out there who really don't have uh, any folks they can talk about the law of one with, you get to watch this and feel like you're in the room for what we hope is an interesting conversation, even if you cannot participate <laughs> verbally. Uh, let's see. So why don't we go ahead and introduce today's panelists. Elaine, would you like to introduce first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Elaine Lucia. And I live in Northern California, north of San Francisco. And uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. I've been a spiritual seeker, uh, uh, consciously, spiritually seeking since I was around 15 years old. And that was decades and decades ago. So uh, it's led me here and I'm thrilled to be here with all of you. Nice. So great to have you here. You uh, Edgar, would you like to introduce next? Hi, everybody. I'm Edgar Rodriguez. I'm uh, in Southern California right now. I'm originally from Costa Rica. I established here in 1990. So I'm really glad to actually join this uh, group of seekers as well, because uh, I started uh, the long one kind of late, although I pretty much practiced the principles since I recall. So this, I'm glad to be with you. Nice. We're so glad to have you here. And Michelle, would you like to introduce? Hello, everybody. I'm Michelle Blakely from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm so excited just to converse and talk about the Law of One. It's really beautiful, and it feeds my soul, and I'm a seeker as well, and uh, just really enjoy talking about all of the materials and the lessons and just jiving with all of you. So looking forward to it, soul family. <laughs> Well, thank you all for being here. These folks are uh, regulars, you could say, in our Tuesday, Saturday Zoom sessions and did want to assure everyone from the beginning that uh, none of us are experts here. Uh, we're just run of the mill wanderers trying to figure shit out along with everybody else. <laughs> so That's right. do you keep that in uh -huh. mind as you go along? <laughs> yep. <laughs> did also want to say that uh, if you are relatively new to the law of one, you might find today's video a bit confusing. Uh, we are kind of assuming that you already have some familiar familiarity with the law of one uh, with concepts like densities, social memory complexes, etc. If not, uh, go watch uh, Aaron Abke video or something because he's really good at explaining this stuff and he's way better looking than I am. So uh, <laughs> that is where we are starting with and our hope eventually is to take you from uh, grade school to grad school in the law of one and how to live it in your daily lives. So lastly, I did want to uh, note that um, we are going to be looking at passages from the entities known as Ra and as Kuo. If you're familiar with the Ra contact, you should already know who Ra is. Otherwise, if you don't know the entity known as Kuo, Kuo could be understood to be a principle composed of Ra at sixth density, Latui at fifth density, and Hatan at fourth density. These are three different social memory complexes. Uh, sometimes other confederation entities join in, but generally speaking, you could say that's uh, who or what Kuo is composed of. 
Uh, the first contact with Quo by the LNL channeling team happened in 1986, almost two years after the end of the raw contact in 1984. And it was not until 1988 that the team uh, asked the origin or the meaning of the name and found that it is derived from who in Latin. Uh, at least that was the meaning understood by Carla and Jim at that time. Uh, Kuo has been channeled every month since then, all the way up to the present day by the LNL channeling team. You can find session transcripts in the LNL Conscious Channeling Library, which can be found uh, not on that page. Sorry, that's not the page I was expecting. Here. Uh, if you go to the homepage of LNL Research and click on Channeling, and then go to Conscious Channeling Library, you will see all the transcripts from 2024 dating all the way back to 1972. There are over 1,700 of them to look at. So um, yes, a wealth of material to look at. So uh, why don't we go ahead and start taking a look at some passages on Wanderers from Ra and for Kuo. First of all, uh, let's take a look at the question of who are Wanderers and where do they come from? Uh, in session 1226, Questioner asked, who are wanderers? Where do they come from? Ra, I am Ra. Imagine, if you will, the sands of your shores. As countless as the grains of sand are the sources of intelligent infinity. When a social memory complex has achieved its complete understanding of its desire, it may conclude that its desire is service to others with a distortion towards reaching their hand figuratively to any entities who call for aid. These entities who you may call brothers and sisters of sorrow move towards this calling of sorrow. These entities are from all reaches of the infinite creation and are bound together by the desire to serve in this distortion. Questioner, how many of them are incarnate on earth now? I am Ra. The number is approximate due to a heavy influx of those birthed at this time due to an intensive need to lighten the planetary vibration and thus aid in harvest. The number approaches 65 million. Interesting, I, I'm trying to think about that number 65 million and thinking what that number is like now 40, 45 years later. I can mm -hmm. assume it's only assume it's in the hundreds of millions. Does that seem reasonable? Um, I believe there's a channeling where it's they mentioned later on in uh, 2003 or five that is 350 millions. But they also mm -hmm. mentioned that doesn't include the ones that are from for density double body activated, which actually counts for a few billions, a half a billion souls. So just wonders uh all everybody born after that day about they said about 350 million so far mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. not surprise me uh yeah. as we go along uh panelists if you have any thoughts reflections questions to throw out there i would say just go ahead and go for it oh. uh there, there are a lot of passages to talk about so we uh if you don't have anything to add we can feel free to go on otherwise yes i would love to hear what you think yeah, I was going to say that term brothers and sisters of sorrow. I just thought that was so beautiful before I even really know the depths of that. You can really, it's just, you know, the mission of the work has such light and there's dark and shadow. And um, I just think that's a beautiful phrase to say that, that, you know, the risk <laughs> that wanderers take and mm. the density of the third planet. So I just think that's a beautiful title to call it. I just love mm -hmm. that one. That I like that too. It's, mm -hmm. It has a ring to it and it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the sorrow, the sorrowful family, we're all brothers and sisters together in this chaotic third density uh -huh. insanity. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's do our work and go home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, de it's definitely beautiful because it's a, you know, it's an answer to a call, which if you or somewhere you hear somebody saying, hey, come on, help me. You definitely don't mm -hmm. want to avoid that. So that's beautiful. I, I yeah. definitely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. It is something that kind of sets the law of one apart from other spiritual teachings that I've looked at, this whole idea of brothers and sisters of mm -hmm. sorrow, mm -hmm. and that these are highly, highly evolved spiritual entities, millions of years ahead of us, that are just, that's their thing. They respond mm -hmm. to planets, worlds that are calling out in sorrow. And we're yeah. not alone. That's all I like. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
Yeah. That's right. Uh, there, there has. Oh, I'm sorry, Edgar. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. It was just a quick thought about oh, oh. jumping off a cliff. That's how they probably feel like when they're oh. Oh, <laughs> coming right. to this nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. Just uh, you know, the whole the whole thing um, that they respond to calls. We we have to call on them. They must be called on. And they're just waiting to respond. Mm -hmm. So we are not alone. They are there. Just call. Indeed. Let's take a closer look at the question of where they come from, which I think they address in the next passage. Questioner, are most of these from the fourth density? What density do they come from? I am Ra. Few there are of fourth density. The largest number of wanderers, as you call them, are of the sixth density. The desire to serve must be distorted towards a great deal of purity of mind and what you may call foolhardiness or bravery, depending on your distortion complex judgment. The challenge, danger of the wanderer is that it will forget its mission, become karmically involved, and thus be swept into the maelstrom from which it had incarnated to aid the destruction. Questioner, what could one of these entities do to become karmically involved? Could you give us an example? I am Ra, an entity which acts in a consciously unloving manner in action with other beings can become karmically involved. Thoughts on that? Reflections? It's uh, it, it's definitely an interesting concept because uh, with all the um, craziness, it's possible even for a wonder since they forget everything they know, they actually is a big sacrifice for them. They can actually get involved in things that they maybe don't even dream about. So if they are not paying attention, they could be doing really bad things, which means they will have to eventually uh, make up for that. So I, I, I think it's a great responsibility, but they know they're at risk. And that's maybe what makes it even more important. It's like going blind and trying to hit the piñata. You know, that's the whole idea, trying to hit it without failing. Because if you <laughs> fail, hey, you're gonna, you might be out really be in a lot of yeah. trouble. That's a great metaphor, great visual. Remind me not to listen to you play piano. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, Elaine, any yeah, I think for me, I was thinking karma. And I think later in this passage, it, you know, it's it's so many definitions and thoughts about what karma means. And I think it's somewhere in Quo or one of the readings, it's it's like a do-over. It's like, you know, it's an opportunity to rebalance. And so that means a lot of things, big karmas, little karmas, little balances. Um, so that is a risk that we run and everybody, every soul on this planet does. So I think that getting caught in the karma is a risk. So I think that's really cool, foolhardily. Yay, we're going to jump off the cliff and go help. Um, and I know, it's when I, I know when I read that first part of Ra's response in uh, 1228, it says, mm -hmm. few there are of fourth density. The largest mm. number of wanderers, as you call them, are of the sixth density. Mm -hmm. So many folks that I run into in you know various law of one Zoom meetings or physical gatherings or, or whatever, um, not really sure what sure what density they've come from. A lot of them are a lot of people I meet are really just trying to graduate from third density to, to fourth density, and mm -hmm. likely so. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering, do you think it would be fair to say that most everybody in our study group, most everybody probably watching this on YouTube, probably a wanderer from fifth or sixth density, do you think? I think so. I think um, a lot in our group are fifth and sixth. I think there are a lot of, um, I'm looking back to, I think Carla has a passage in her Wanderers, her book, where she talked about you know, third density beings that are moving to the fourth density have similar vibrations as as wanderers in the fifth and sixth. So I think it just speaks to all of our ability to have that light. But I do feel that um, people that I've met in this group and other people just out in the world, um, as I learn more about um, having a higher vibration and being a wanderer, you can, you can feel it. So yeah, I would say a lot of us are. I think it's just fascinating to comp contemplate the idea that so mm -hmm. many of us really are from sixth density, but we've just mm -hmm. completely forgotten it. And mm -hmm. we have probably 
reincarnated many, many times uh, in Earth third density and hopefully each time maybe get a little farther in remembering who we are and some things that we have tried so hard to, to, to remember in previous times. That, that's any... what I'm wondering, like if you if you are a sixth density wanderer, that means you've had so many, many incarnations. I wonder if the more incarnations you have, the less likely you're going to be swept into the maelstrom. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, and mm. not have that innate uh, um, um, uh, sense that of of yourself being a wanderer, maybe maybe not with that definition or that type of awareness, but but it, it seems like it might almost kind of pr protect you in a way that there are going to be things uh, if you do happen to, you know, engage in some kind of karmic activity that's just kind of out of out of your soul stream <laughs> and all this experience that you've had, it's probably, you know, likely that you're going to correct, hopefully in mm -hmm. that incarnation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if if you are from sixth density, because by the time you're at sixth density, you've balanced love wisdom. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Or, uh, yeah. Working on it. <laughs> That's yeah. the density. <laughs> right. <laughs> Compassion yeah. and wisdom. Yes. Yeah. Then, then I believe uh, in one of the previous meetings, somebody mentioned that I think it was Linda that Carla had been past regression and it was found that she actually specializes a wanderer to go to little planets and help them into transition to 34. So, mm. I mean, it definitely, um, I, I can tell, you know, a lot of the members of our group, you definitely can say they, this is not the first rodeo they go to. So you can see they already have probably uh, plenty of experience. We can mm -hmm. forget 75 million years for sick density. How many times you can fit 75,000 in 75 million? You can do mm -hmm. a lot of rounds of third density, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> it always reminds me of the movie Groundhog Day. That movie just keeps coming back to me every couple of days or so. It seems like yes. that is such a great metaphor for this whole process where yes. every time we come back and reincarnate, we're facing really similar tests and challenges mm -hmm. that we did yes. the last time, but trying to see, can we do it? differently this time mm -hmm. can we make different choices decisions do a little bit better it's mm -hmm. uh it's an interesting concept to find that balance you know because uh in, in a way like i said i only started maybe uh, learning about the long one three years ago but i don't remember since i was a child i remember trying to separate the kids in first grade because they were fighting and instead of separating the guy that was fighting one start hitting me, I was like, oh my goodness. I, <laughs> I always was trying to be like the peacemaker and helping people. I remember that there was something in me. I said, don't fight, guys. There's, there's no reason to fight. And then just to get in the middle, trying to help, I got punched in the nose. So, <laughs> But it's kind of the way you might feel being a wonder because you will very often get punched in the nose when you get your nose when you don't supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, how about, let's take a look at the question of why do wanderers come here? Got a few good passages on this, one from Ra and I believe one or two from Kuo. Session 65, questioner. Then each of the wanderers here acts as a function of the biases he has developed in any way he sees fit to communicate or simply be in his polarity to aid the total consciousness of the planet. Is there any, shall we say, more physical way that he aids in? What I mean is, do the vibrations somehow add just as electrical polarity or charging a battery or something? Does that also aid the planet, just the physical presence of the wanderers? Just by being, brought... they mm -hmm. do, right? Yeah. Exactly. This is correct. And the mechanism is precisely as you state. We intended this meeting in the second portion of our previous answer. You may at this time note that as with any entities, each wanderer has its unique abilities, biases, and specialties, so that from each portion of each density represented among the wanderers comes an array of pre-incarnative talents, which then may be expressed upon this plane, which you now experience, so that each wanderer in offering itself before incarnation has some special service to offer in addition to the doubling effect of planetary love and light 
and the basic function of serving as beacon or shepherd. Thus, there are those from fifth density whose abilities to express wisdom are great. There are fourth and sixth density wanderers whose ability to serve as, shall we say, passive radiators or broadcasters of love and love light are immense. There are many other wanderers whose talents brought into this density are quite varied. Thus, wanderers have three basic functions once the forgetting is penetrated, the first two being basic, the tertiary one being unique to that particular mind-body-spirit complex. Cole elaborates on this a little bit uh, in a session from September 16th, 1990. Quo says, each wanderer has a variety of services to offer. The first being the presence, which is of a lighter vibrational quality and which shines without any action being necessary and lightens the planetary vibration by its very presence and radiance. The second level of service is that which you would call more specific and that the entity will have brought with it into the earthly incarnation those talents and skills which may be utilized in a more specific or focused fashion in order to operate, shall we say, more as with the surgeon's scalpel. The third level of service is that which is more personalized in nature, and that the entity will also take the opportunity to provide a service not only to others, but will seek to balance or harmonize some portion of its being as it is in need of such balancing or harmonization. As all interaction with other entities provides a catalyst, which is a service, this is also a level of service to others that is valuable, though it is a personal component as well. Thoughts on that? They're just peacemakers, you know, their, their job <laughs> is coming and helping, even if they don't, they still can help the planet by just allowing their vibration to diffuse all that heat that is generated by the lack of by you know by the people that don't care, right? They um um those that are haven't been awakened yet. So it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, it's a passive um um diffuser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say just you know, in study group with all of my fellow loved ones, uh, you know, buddies and students and in person and even on Zoom, I can feel that vibration, even just when we're interacting or discussing. I think the vibration is high and it's, you can feel it and it's such diversity and um, the experience with others, uh, other selves talking about the law of one definitely taps into that. It just feels very natural and bright and light and high vibrational. It's, I, I, I think we all bring our unique talents in a different way. And um, yeah, I just love the fluidity of our role here and our call to action. And um, it's just great, big and small and everything in between. Nice. I did want to take a minute just to put in a plug for something that you mentioned, Michelle, and that is study groups. Yeah, I really cannot emphasize enough how valuable uh, I always hear from folks from saying it's so nice to be able to have people to have these conversations with. So uh, whether you want to meet online or in person, if you go to the LNL research page and click on connect and then go ahead, click on study groups, then you kind of find all the list of study groups in Asia, Pacific, Europe and yep. North America <clears throat> uh, and all the information you need to contact. So, yeah, get in touch with them. Each group has a different vibe depending mm. on who's there, who facilitates. but. We hope everyone finds a group that uh, they vibe with well. Elaine, did you have anything to add on this stuff here? Yeah, you know, when I when I read or listen to Quo, there, I, I get so much imagery in my mind. And these three levels of service, I just have this picture in my mind of a, a wanderer who's, who's a light being and they've got their backpack and they're, they're coming to third density and they're, they're Low, their their uh, light body is filled with light and they're you know healthy and ready for this journey back to third density their second level of service is that they've got some tools in their backpack you know whatever their service or skill is that they're bringing to third density and then the third level is knowing that they're going to, well, before they get here, before the veil, that it's, they're taking on this challenge. And, you know, 
what we read about wanderers is they really have a lot of challenges in third density um, as children. And maybe it's because their body has a lot of light in it. And there's that catalyst with third density. Um, and so uh, those challenges are the catalyst of third level service that they have to overcome, which also is service to others while they're here. Because when you process that catalyst for yourself with love, unconditional love and forgiveness for yourself or others, it's reciprocal, you know? I just Indeed. love that, that we're, we're packed and ready, ready to work. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's that's... go. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that I came to appreciate a lot about the law of one fairly early in the game. Uh, and that was just that it helps explain things in such a wonderful way that I've never understood before. And that mm -hmm. this all makes so much sense that, wow, that's amazing to imagine that each person really planned out everything they needed for their incarnation to do whatever it is they needed to do to mm -hmm. uh, continue in their spiritual growth. Ah, oh, that's just an amazing and a, and a really beautiful thing. It, it is beautiful. And, 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 you know, we have our higher self and our guides to help us in between these incarnations, get ready to go and, and do our work. And it's, it's just, it's very, I don't know. It's very comforting, you know, <laughs> for sure. Just have to remember to ask since they're your guardian angels will not That's violate right. your free will. And, and right. thank them. And thank them. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to take a look at the question of how can wanderers be best of service to others? Have a couple from passages from Quo that speak well to this and I think address something that I heard somebody mention not too long ago. Well, let's see, this is from May 20th, 2005. The wanderer is as one who has sacrificed a great deal in order to risk the forgetting process and enter into, into incarnation for service to others. It is a courageous decision to make, and we congratulate the one known as C on having plunged, plunged into incarnation in third density for such a loving and service to others reason. The, natures of service to, uh, the nature of service to others is often greatly misunderstood among your peoples because the emphasis, as we have said recently to the one known as T, is so often construed to be that of doing an outer service to others that mounts up or amounts to something in the eyes of the world. Certainly, you have already in this incarnation offered service to others of a substantial kind that has indeed come to the notice of the world. However, we ask you to think of yourself as a crystalline being whose nature is basically to share your beauty with the world, with yourself and with the infinite creator. If you can think of yourself as a gem or a crystal, then you shall be able perhaps to come close to understanding what we are talking about. We say that the heart of service to others is in the essence of your being rather than in the details of your outer service. Here's another passage. Another aspect of being a wanderer, which is common to those from elsewhere and to those who are native to the earth sphere is the enormous yearning to serve. And we say to each that the main service of each of you is the service of being yourself. For when you are most truly and deeply yourself, when your heart is open and vibrating in its fullness, you become a crystal capable of receiving energy, transmuting energy and releasing energy into the earth sphere. Many of you from other planets have come here specifically to do this. It is a simple process. You breathe in, you breathe out, you allow the truth to flow through you. You allow the infinite supply of energy that is the love of the creator to flow through your energetic system and out into the earth planes. And as you bless this process, encourage it, you intensify and enhance those vibrations that move into the earth plane. Each of you, by being the way you are, is at this time a servant of the light, and you need do nothing more than live and love to fulfill your mission upon earth. Naturally, each of you gave yourself gifts to share, lessons to learn, and outer services to perform, and we encourage each to move along those lines of talents and gifts as you perceive them, 
looking for ways to share those gifts, but realize more than those outer doings, the inner essence is the true and central gift of the life which you came to offer. It is a beautiful gift. It is a gift that will take you all of your life to give and an encouragement to you is to give this gift and do this service regardless of what else you seem to be doing in your life. Oh my God. I mean, that's just beautiful. I mean, all of those paragraphs. It's, it's pure just, love. Pure love. It just, it's you just, know, hits your I heart. It's just beautiful. Um, I think this is one of these three paragraphs or one of my favorites. And um, I love crystals and gems. And so I immediately <laughs> felt Too. very much akin to that description yep. and think of all of you that I've met and and have these discussions about law when I just as gems and crystals and you know you give power to, or spirituality to your gems yeah you know I, I just I think it's a beautiful um description and I think it's encompassing all the souls on the earth you know I think we hear a lot about um you know, what if you're not a wanderer? What does it mean? You're trying to be separate. And I think there's another passage about that. But we all have this beautiful light from the creator. Um, it's just they're just different gems and they look a little different and they have different properties and they're all diverse. Um, but yeah, I just really, really love this passage. And I love the beingness part. So, so being and truly being, you know, a uh, incarnation on this planet is really tough and really powerful um but yeah i have lots to say but i just love this is my one of my favorites about the gems yeah yeah it took me a while to come to appreciate quo i think uh like many others i started reading the raw contact got used to raw's uh mode of communication and mm -hmm. as i saw passages and references to quo from other folks i was thinking man this dude is fucking verbose. It's like, <laughs> wow, I was just, I did not have the attention span to like read the, like, of the average channeling session. And it's I don't like know how or why, but at some point I started running across sessions that somehow mm -hmm. resonated with me. Like you're alluding to, uh, Michelle, the poetry is Yeah. Uh, and you know, it makes me wonder about the the feeling to be of service to others and how the range of intensity that souls feel that, you know, that we feel towards that. And it just makes me think, well, oh, that, that, that might be a reason why <laughs> it's because we full heartedly said, I'll go and I'll, you know, or brothers and sisters of sorrow, I'll go help, you know, and not really understanding why, or just being a loving person. I think, I think when I thought about this passage, actually, I thought about my mother. I think my mother is a just a being, just vibration, even though she is a teacher, or she's retired, was a teacher. But I mean, she's an example of I just thought of just a person out in the world who's just that high vibration. That's an example of that when I think about that. Then others, too. So many others. Yeah. The man I talked to in the grocery store the other day, he was <laughs> bright light being. Sure. sure. Uh, Edgar, Elaine, any thoughts? Elaine? Well, I, I found Quo first before Ra. Mm -hmm. And oh. so I um, just, uh, and I, I heard uh, the uh, Brian Scott reading Quo uh, on YouTube late at night three in the morning when I couldn't sleep and I was looking for I was probably watching kittens and babies on YouTube <laughs> and I I found I found uh Brian Scott reading Kuo when I was searching for the Seth material someone reading Seth material online and just I I within 10 seconds I was like what is this beautiful poetry this warm filled with love and hope and comfort. You guys don't have to try so hard. Just be the beautiful light being that you are. Every single one of you is a crystal light being loved for all eternity for your specific light, which is Isn't unique. That 
But then that's the, such a beautiful thing that each and every person on the planet right mm -hmm, now yes. made this yes. plan with their higher self to do that's this. That's right. And, and all you have to do is be yourself. You really don't need to do anything just else. Just be yourself on the deepest <laughs> level you can be. You know, I found this when I was in a deep, 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 dark, dark place in my life where I felt completely alone. And this literally, I was like, I am not alone. What is this? And where is this? And I never looked back. And it's so beautiful. It is so of love. It, 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 is, it can only be of the one infinite creator that every being on this planet, rocks, trees, animals, and humans. <laughs> That's um, right are are beloved and not alone and not only that that we are so beloved as our unique light but that we are all one so yeah. we're we're uniquely loved but we're we all share that light as well and our portion is our unique beautiful portion Mm -hmm. And it just, I just love it. Yeah. I read quote, quote every day and night. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, yeah. I'm right there with you guys. It's like, yeah, love it's it. so beautiful. Nice. Yeah, Edgar. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I found the low one at the raw content. I read it first and it was absolutely, you know, crying after you read a few pages. You know, you probably felt the same. You remember so much. It's like, I know this. I knew this. I've been doing this all my life. And mm -hmm. But when I found uh, cool, I actually, I couldn't stop reading it. You know, I kept reading, reading, reading. And I went back and I started reading from 1972. And I'm like, <laughs> and I found, you know, all the, you know, entities. John, they love talking about science. I love science. I studied relativity for a while. And then it's like, you find Lima. You find, you know, some other ones. Monka. You find so many more. But cool is a special because the way, you know, they they give you things is like, here, this is it. And they give you that disclosure, which is like, you know, if you don't feel like this is all right with you, because we all have different evolutions, if we're following different, different roads, I just love it. And, and I can definitely read. I'm always looking for more uh, channelings from any place I can find because it's so enlightening. I feel so happy when I read. I could be really sad one day, you know, because catalyst is so difficult. I just go and read him and it's like, okay, everything is good. I'm fine right now. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yes. Cool. Yes. If it's okay with you guys, I had a couple other passages I wanted to look at yep. just related still to the question of how wanderers can be best of service to others. Don't think I'm going to read the entire passages. Maybe you just want to look at the highlighted parts. Uh, they're saying each wanderer has in common with each other wanderer the ability to enhance the vibratory patterns and intensity of intensity of the earth plane. Some become teachers of spiritual principles. Some become healers of mental, emotional, spiritual, or physical difficulties. Some become those who may be seen as creative artists that express through word, through paintings, through music. Others simply go about a daily round of activities and what could be seen as a normal third density experience, being mothers, fathers, teachers, clerks, bishops, and so forth. <laughs> I, I, yeah, the normal third density of experience of, you know, like being a bishop. Stuff like I know. <laughs> Or the Pope. Yeah, yeah. We can relate to that. <laughs> Wanderers who come to this planet from other densities have served as beacons of light through song and art and government. Uh, great waves of entities have come among you and have begun to remember who they are. They have shared humor, art, stories, songs. This uh, talking about waves of entities, one manner of answer in the incarnation this group is known as wanderers in waves or in groups. This began in earnest with the birthing of the concept of freedom, which was born at approximately the same time as its intenser form as was this country some 200 of your years ago. Uh, there have been various events which have been prominent in allowing further waves or groups of wanderers to incarnate. The second what you call world wars was most important in this regard. 
for the release of that energy known as nuclear is of such a profound nature that a great wave of wanderers incarnated at the cessation of that conflict. These wanderers then began to reach what your peoples call their maturity during the period you have referred to as the 1960s. And this flash of light, shall we say, took many forms that was felt around your planet. So cool, I think, just to reflect on that idea of different waves of wanderers coming through uh, at the beginning years of this country, this experiment in democracy, shall we say, uh, the uh, world wars, the 1960s, uh, wanderers who have incarnated bringing gifts of humor, art, stories, songs, government, music, and so on. Uh, any thoughts on any of that stuff? You can actually tell, you know, you can look into it retrospectively and you say, oh, that guy must have been a wonder. You know, if you look at some politicians, very few, you will say their true motivations, you know, to help. Um, you could probably say maybe some of the ex-presidents, maybe, but it's difficult because, you know, I would imagine um, there's also uh, there would be a lot of karma involved in, if you choose to be a politician. So. Must be really special people trying to go that way, but I you could see a bunch of you know uh, singers, and artists, and just it, you know so many musicians, so many, so many musicians, Imagine so Absolutely. many musicians were wanderers. Yes, humorous. We were talking about Robin Williams on our yes. uh, Facebook page. Yeah. He Absolutely, was such a angelic being who. Well, he broke into TV playing Mork from Goddamn Ork. So I don't know what more evidence he needs that he was a wanderer. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah. Does anybody have any other favorite artists or anybody in these categories who you think is or was a wanderer? Well, definitely you can say Prince was a wanderer. Nobody could play the guitar like that. He was definitely. Yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. For sure. 100 yeah. truly creative you know it's oh. amazing yeah uh, always the best him. seven minute electric guitar yes in the hall of fame with tom petty that was the best seven minutes to car legendary oh my gosh fucking legendary yeah yeah, yeah. george awesome. harrison's son i mean come on really it was awesome yeah. well, there there was so many Henry great Henry stories story. about prince yeah so many great stories did you yeah. hear about his uh halftime show at the super bowl oh yeah it was awesome i was crying purple red yeah, of course. <laughs> well, it was the first and only, I think, Super Bowl halftime show where they've had like rain, like significant rain. And they warned him about it that it was in the forecast. And he said, Rain, man, bring it on. Perfect. And yeah. It was yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, we'll turn it purple. <laughs> I think mean, one of my favorite, like, historic, you know, when I, I um, got into Love One reading Raw. The materials a lot one first and then kuo but one of the things that i really enjoyed you know they talked a lot about akhenaten from the egyptian dynasty the 18th dynasty and i've just i had already as edgar's you mentioned in lane two like been on this path and so when i got into law one it just felt very natural and like yeah this is affirming all the things but akhenaten to me is just fascinating um you know first as a starving wanderer coming here and just trying to unite and and talk about there's one really infinite creator, even though he called it, you know, the Aten. But I just love that Raw talked about that. I'm like, yes, this it, it just felt it was another notch, like, yeah, this this is just great stuff. So I think he absolutely was a wanderer and not from this planet at all. And it's from Sirius. And um I just thought that was mm -hmm. cool to think about that. I love that person in history. So if you could get in a time machine and go back to ancient Egypt during the raw contact, oh, there, would you do it, Michelle? Wow. I was a priestess. I had a reading one time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And I probably did something crazy with karma. Who knows? So I'm back. <laughs> I would not be the least bit surprised. Yeah, that I can does see it. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, I did yeah. something nutty. <laughs> Elaine, as a uh, professional musician yourself, any favorite? musicians that you would consider to be wandering gosh uh, all of them i mean <laughs> I, I i consider my musician friends that i've been playing music with my entire life um my brothers and sisters and and they are they're just tuned in to uh, the music of the cosmos 
they've got their own channel, their own beautiful, unique way of, um, of sharing their gifts. Um, so I just, and I, I, I always feel so honored and that it's such a privilege that I get to do music and be mm -hmm. around all these people who are doing the same thing throughout my entire life from the time I was a little girl. Um, you know, God, it's, I don't know. I think John Lennon was a wanderer. Oh, yes. Uh, for sure. You know, um, pretty sure the, all the Beatles were. Yeah. 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 The Beatles for sure. You know, um, just James Taylor. Oh my gosh. You know, Joni Mitchell just, and you know, I was, I was a young teen in the seventies and that's when those artists were coming up and I don't know, those songs, they just have so much love and light in them. And, you know, I'm really dating myself, but you know, the, the music these kids make today, I just don't get it, you know? <laughs> how, about, how about Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong. Oh, yeah. oh Louis gosh, yes. Absolutely. Well, and you I was know. thinking of Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. She Ella Fitzgerald. Was, Absolutely. She was my Those idol. Followers. Yes. She I was mean, amazing. And, amazing. Well, she, uh, her voice, you know, she was in the, in, in jazz, but she, mm -hmm. her, her voice and her body was her instrument. And she sang and scat sang like she was a sax player. She was, her whole body was an instrument. Mm -hmm. And she, and she had that high clear angelic beautiful wonderful tone and that angelic face she's just oh yeah she's an angel mm -hmm. yeah she's yeah, an I angel had, <laughs> I had always known that the 1960s was a special time in the history of humanity that there was yeah, some I sort think so. of explosion of consciousness that happened largely uh, in part catalyzed by the Beatles introducing yeah. uh, Eastern mysticism and, and music to the West. I think it would be fair to say that did that. And I would yeah. not be the least bit surprised if those four have incarnated as, as a group before. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, would like, I would like to take a look at another question and that is why specifically do wanderers choose to incarnate during harvest time? In session 52, the question was, why time of harvest is selected by so many wanderers as time for incarnation? I am Ra. There are several reasons for incarnation during harvest. They may be divided by the terms self and other self. The overriding reason for the offering of these brothers and sisters of sorrow in incarnative states is the possibility of aiding other selves by the lightening of the planetary consciousness distortions and the probability of offering catalyst to other selves, which will increase the harvest. There are two other reasons for choosing this service, which have to do with the self. The wanderer, if it remembers and dedicates itself to service, will polarize much more rapidly than is possible in the far more etiolated realms of higher density catalyst. I think I looked up it, uh, etiolated means like really faint, pale light. Uh, I might not be remembering that correctly, but I think that's correct. Pretty... I looked it up too. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Vague light. Yeah. The final reason is within the mind, body, spirit totality of the social memory complex totality, which may judge that an entity or members of a societal entity can make use of third density catalyst to recapitulate a learning slash teaching which is a judge to be less than perfectly balanced. This especially applies to those entering into and proceeding through sixth density, wherein the balance between compassion and wisdom is perfected. I find that super fascinating. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking on that? What, what does that highlighted part mean to, to you at the bottom? Um. What just popped into my mind is 
as above, so below. So six density wanderers are still trying to balance compassion and wisdom. And third density is that times a trillion, <laughs> right? Um, and um, what I'm getting so, is that, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. So, so, so I think that because third density, you know, we're at the end of, 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 a, of the, of the, what do you call it? The time period <laughs> before harvest. Right, cool. um, um, it, 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 it there, um, this is helping them, uh, right. Evolve right. spiritually as well too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, our friends in the Catalyst have said more than a few times that one of the great advantages to incarnating on Earth, and especially at the end of third density, is it is such an intense time that you can achieve growth here that would take like literally millions of years up in fourth, fifth, sixth density. So, yeah, that's one part. The part that was really catching my attention was the part that's highlighted in yellow. And what I'm interpreting from that is that a social memory complex might send some of its constituent members like individual members of the population back to incarnate in third density to perfect their balance of love and wisdom because fourth density is the density of uh, love and understanding fifth density is the density of wisdom and sixth density is the density balancing of the both. balancing mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. both and since Ra mm -hmm. is a social memory complex that is trying to graduate from sixth density, it would make a lot of sense if they found that they need to send some members of their complex back to earth to perfect that balance between love and wisdom, which is why they were saying they're so, yes. the majority of wanderers <clears throat> here are from sixth density. Mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. sense. Back to school. Yes. Refor reform school. <laughs> balance. It's tough. it's tough back there. <laughs> But that means really potentially could very well be that a majority of six to say wanderers on earth are actually from the raw social memory complex. Hmm. That's pretty cool to imagine. Or that. from another planetary system, right? Or, another yeah, planet. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Thank you for that, Jonathan, because <clears throat> that's, that's a, a really uh, dense sentence right there. <laughs> <laughs> It is, and I could be totally wrong on that, and I could be totally wrong about the, the whole raw thing, but I think one thing that I've learned in studying wanders and that I've heard a lot of people express is that uh, whether you're a wanderer or not really shouldn't make any difference how you live your life. You should be living your life the same way, but understanding and acknowledging that you are, in fact, a wanderer, I think, could be helpful in understanding yourself. Yeah, I think we're all so to speak, not are native to the planet, right? We're, we come here in different ways, right? So that whole, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but the density of the planet is what it is. And it is a balance of love and wisdom. If you think about all the, you know, um, the catalyst here and um, it's all about balance. Raw talks a lot about that. So it's quote, cool, like all of these things, you know, the chakras and the way the energy systems are balanced and, they move fluidity to it. So that's really a big message for all of our souls. The it's like a, all of those it's like a giant school where you basically are coming just to test yourself. And then, then mm -hmm. you would definitely want to choose the the most difficult because it means that if you have any uh, unbalance, uh, you know, um, uh, sub densities of your you know, light, then you can make sure they get balanced. So I believe it's a, uh, Mm -hmm. How do you test, you know, something? You you put it in the toughest situation, so that way, if he breaks, hey, you know, I still need to work on it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, I so, I uh, like this. The, oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I I like this a lot because because then the sixth density wanderer, if they if their their mission is complete, um and they go back to sixth density and they're they're done with this service to others part, they take that to sixth density where they then offer all that they've 
learned in third density back to that social right. memory complex. Yeah. Which in so, the case of raw could very well help them graduate. So. Yes. Yeah, so that that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like grad well, school. Elaine, Edgar, and Michelle, raise your hand if you would agree that balancing energies of love and wisdom is something that you came to this incarnation to learn. <laughs> Yes. Let the Akashic Records show everyone on the Zoom call <laughs> is raising their hand right now. It only occurred to me a few minutes ago that um, I'm not sure what people watching this recording on YouTube are seeing because I'm doing screen share. On my own screen, I'm seeing all four of you appear. Uh, I'm guessing on the recording, it's only going to be the person who's speaking. And I'm hoping it's that much because I'm going to be really embarrassed if we don't even see the person who's speaking. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's going to be really embarrassing, but, but that is the pod. This is the pilot episode, so it might crash. We shall see. Yeah, and think about the times we're living in now. I think Jonathan, you said something about the '60s. Like I remember growing up thinking, "Man, I miss the '60s." Well, not kind of miss most of the '60s. That was like all the things that were going on on the planet. But then here we are now. So you know, there's always opportunity, and that was yeah. intentional. We made those contracts, you know, on the other side and chose to come here. And so think how much we need to balance love and wisdom. I mean, mm -hmm. really stretch to do that. You know, it's really intense. And um, yeah, so I think there is a reason this is, you know, grad school is I've heard some of these say, oh, it's more like remedial school. But I like to think of it as, you know, it's really intense <laughs> grad school. You go mm -hmm. Depends where you're dissertation. at, I guess. <laughs> uh, it sounds more like night school because it's a really tough crowd. But you yeah, know. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Carla many times referred to Earth as a reform school <laughs> for all the third density oh entities. He got kicked out of all the other planets because they blew the fucking thing up or rendered it uninhabitable. Oh, for third God. Density. Oh, God. They said the vast majority of entities incarnated on Earth now it's came from planets school. that blew themselves all up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Again, it's like Groundhog Day. I'd like to think. I said, yeah. okay, you got one more <laughs> chance. See if you can well, fuck it up this time. We're not going to let them do it. No, that's why we're here. We're raising the vibration we're here. The vibration. Yep. <laughs> and and even a pinprick of dark of light will illuminate the mm -hmm. darkness. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's okay. It's it's dark, but it's you know. Right mm -hmm. now, it feels like it's the darkness before the darkness before the dawn, but mm -hmm. dawn is is here. And you know? we have a, such a, and Mother Gaia is so beautiful. We are oh. really, this is an amazing planet. Well, yes. I, I I love history, but if you check history, you can see all the cycles that keep repeating. You know, one hundred percent. The Roman Empire, yeah. then you see, you know, eventually big empires. They all fall. They all fall out eventually from the ashes. You get uh -huh. a new one, but it's just uh -huh. it's tiresome because you will imagine that people will decide to learn and change, right? It's mm -hmm. just very hard. I think someone asked me the other day, "What would be what would be a cool name?" And I would, I always, I, I always think Phoenix is a cool name, you know, or like rising from the ashes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it's just a cool allusion to your cyclical. Everything is cyclical. You're exactly right, Edgar. Mm hmm. <laughs> let's well, take a well, look I, at I, oh. i'm voting for keeping toilets because you know when the romans had all that system of toilets it disappeared for so many years <laughs> 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 you're gonna be here another yeah. 700 years i want to have at least i want to have a toilet i'm sorry <laughs> well i mean yeah look at all the technologies that were lost in atlantis egypt yeah the roman empire with their their aqueducts and and their toilets and their running waters and their <laughs> palaces you're i i'm with you right there although gosh today's technology is wow pretty That's pretty something. intense mm -hmm. it is but you know it's primitive to what we can do uh, it, we can. it could right. disappear in just a week if you think of it if you you know there's no more landmines yeah. so if you those satellites up there around us they just go off we're again in the cave man's uh, time you know because it's gonna be how do you communicate there's no phones your cell phones won't work so smoke signals <laughs> mm -hmm. you might have to have a conversation with our neighbor <laughs> or our family you know 
around the around the cooking fire no cell phones <laughs> just each other <laughs> Let's take a look at another question, if you don't mind. A uh, question often comes up is, where do wanderers go after their incarnation ends? And I did have a passage from Quo that speaks uh, at length on it. This is going to be a long one. See if you can stay with me through this one. Uh, from October 14th, 2005. I feel that I am a wanderer. Can you confirm? Please comment on where wanderers return to after graduation from the third density. We are those of Quo and are aware of your query, my brother. We can confirm that you are indeed a wanderer. The choice of where you go after you have completed graduation from third density is a choice that will not be made until that moment. Upon the physical death of the body, which is connected to your spirit complex, there is a period of unknown length during which you finish that business that is yours within third density life. This includes a carryover as you stand in the gateway where the expectations that you have of the life to come or what this instrument calls the larger life, meet the actual actuality of that larger life. For many people, there is a time of clearing away of expectation of an unknown duration, depending upon the tenacity to which certain expectations are held to the self. For instance, if an entity desires or expects to see the one known as Jesus, Jesus or the one known as the Buddha, then they will need a certain amount of time during which these expectations are fulfilled. I want to meet Prince afterwards. <laughs> Can you make that happen? <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> that was not in the transcript. Sorry. I love that. <laughs> when an entity's mind and consciousness are clear at last of expectation, then that entity is ready to go through the process of actual graduation. That process is as simple as moving into the light and stopping at the place that feels the most comfortable, neither too much light nor too little light. It will not be obvious at all as to whether that final destination, that place of stopping, is in third density or fourth density. Once you have stopped, then you will discover, along with your higher self, what your point of destination has been. If you are still in third density, then you and your higher self will talk together, looking over your incarnation that has just taken place and choosing the next location for third density work. Once that location has been chosen, then you and your guidance system will move into discussions concerning the actual setup and shape of the incarnation to come. If, on the other hand, you have stopped at a point that is further than third density, whether it be fourth, fifth, or sixth density, then it may be assumed that, lo that that location is your embarkation point for your next incarnation. It may be that you will not move back to your previous de destination, in other words, that destination from which you came to offer yourself to service upon planet Earth. It may be that there will be incarnations that simply rebuild and rebalance parts of yourself that in some way were damaged during the sometimes very rough and tumble processes of third density incarnation. That's <laughs> putting it lightly. In the end, when all impediments to your returning to your place of origin have been met and balanced, you and your guidance system or your higher self, as this instrument calls it, will then do the same kind of thinking and planning that we were speaking of, of an entity doing in third density when they do not get to graduate and when they're simply planning their next incarnation. For one who has wandered such as you, the universe is quite open. You and your guidance system will discuss the needs of your beingness for rest, for learning, or for further service. These discussions and considerations will take in the full range of your beingness in a way that is difficult to share with you with words. Were you to attempt to write down the fullness of these considerations, you would discover that the document that you produced would be thousands and thousands of pages long. It is no inconsiderable thing to choose the manner of your expression when you have cleared service as a wanderer in a lower density and you are now contemplating your next move. Generally speaking, you will be consulting not only with your guidance system as a person, but with the guidance system of the group of wanderers of which you are a part. And while it is not certain, it is very likely that you, as a member of that group, will choose after due consideration and deliberation with other members of that group to serve again as a group in another situation which we, in which you become wanderers once again and entering into becoming natives of a lower density in order to serve as light bearers and lighthouses, as this instrument would say. Mm -hmm. 
that last portion, you know, it's like, it just showed you drive. It just, it's like, yeah, you finish, you're going to do it again. Maybe did it a thousand times. Who knows? I was like, let's go for it. It's like, you know, motivation. I like that. I actually love that part. Mm -hmm. You're ready to sign up for another hitch already, aren't you? <laughs> I will. <laughs> You are a glutton for punishment, my friend. <laughs> it's a beautiful and thing, thing the, to be called that way. You know, I mean, there. most people are really trying to think of how to get a, out of third density and fourth density. <laughs> you really wouldn't normally think about coming back. But I, don't I respect know, that. I don't know about that, but you know, if you think of it, I'm, I don't know. I always, people ask me, when are you retiring? And then my clients say, are you retiring? Probably when I die. Because I can see myself not doing what I do every day, honestly. And then mm. looking into, you know, unity with the creator. That's what basically six density is trying to achieve is be one with the creator. Be the creator. And that's that's the greatest motivator you could find. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I've done this mission many, many times before this. <laughs> and yeah, I could do it again if need be. We will see going to have to take a little bit of processing there but mm -hmm. it is really i mean when you get down to it i think all wanderers would agree it is an honor and a privilege to be given the opportunity to incarnate in earth this late third density as they have said many times our friends in the confederation man everybody who is here right now fought tooth and nail to for the opportunity because there's so many more souls that mm -hmm. would love nothing more than the chance to grow in the way that we have opportunities to, to grow and not enough bodies to house them. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, uh, uh, was there something you want to add? Just, uh, I was going to say something else, but what you just said was, is so beautiful because that thought that, that we are here at this particular time, we fought to get here and we joke, you know, we're in reform school and it's, it's, this is craziness, <laughs> but I literally uh, constantly have this sense of gratitude for it all, even the really rough times, the hard times, the, the, the you know extreme catalyst, and and all all of that. It's like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you, because there's there are gifts in every single moment that we're here, you know. Mm -hmm. and and i also love it that we're we're not alone you have your guidance system you have your fellow wanderers you know you have your higher self we have each other in this it's just yeah. beautiful and wouldn't it be funny if the four of us had done this before if we had that? yes wouldn't that be awesome <laughs> we were the we same were shit done. before uh, we were doing it again been, We've been pals for eons. <laughs> and I like the portion that it's well planned and, you know, like, you know, had a discussion about the catalyst and all the things like it's, I'm kind of, you know, I've had different parts of the veil are lifting in different ways. Um, but it will be, in, it will be interesting just to, to experience that on the other side of like, yeah, I'll jump back in and have this catalyst and work with let this. Me, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Consider this for a moment. Everything you do in your life is plan ahead. So oh, yeah. We all plan this mm -hmm. time that we are together. So it's not just random. It means that it's very likely that we met before we came here. So that's why we're here together right now. I love always talk about, I think, <laughs> my bookends in addition to the raw material in Kuo for Wanderers, of course, Dolores Cannon, you know, all those. And um, Michael Newton's books about, you know, groups and how groups come together and plan their incarnation and probably jump up to be wanderers. And um, and I make a joke to myself. I'm like, oh, OK, my next iteration, I'm going to be I'll, I'm going to work in the, on the Confederate. I'm going to work for the Confederation. I'll be <laughs> one of the I'll be one of the admins. <laughs> you want a desk job is that what you said <laughs> you know, okay i'll fix somebody no. away. great you know they need you out on the field yeah i love I'll it out the field <laughs> no, uh, but yeah i just love it just the you know just the possibilities like you're saying Edgar. we planned all this and it's just great so yeah i'm excited to get back to that confederation and be like whoa how many missions did i do what's <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I love the part yeah. of that, the beginning of that passage where they're saying uh, <laughs> you have to walk through the steps of light and you have no idea where, when you stop, whether you're going to be in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, then yep. <laughs> it's like you've been blindfolded, <laughs> even led to some place. You take off the blindfold and fuck third density. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the final, it's like a, it's like a pop quiz, Jonathan, or a, yeah. a, 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 you know, the final exam. Trick question. Yeah. Trick question oh, here. Trick. <laughs> Where are you gonna get off on the on the steps of light? You know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yep. Yep. The well, problem we... is you can study for this. You know, you can really study and prepare. It's just how you mm -hmm. are. That's it. So mm -hmm. you have to be you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good point. Yep. You have to be you, and you can only hold as much light as you as you can. You know. Yeah. You it's can't, you can't weight. push farther than you're meant to. That's true. Yeah. I just remember myself just thinking, you know, you just have to be you. That's it's right. and That's a really, it's kind of deep. If you really think about it, you think, oh, you just be yourself. But that's a lot of work in some instances. That's not necessarily easy to do for all particular souls. Um, but it is freeing. <laughs> well, how many of you have a lot of pressure outside you? Like, I'm sure you have family members and mm -hmm. friends that, you know, they put a lot of pressure on you and you feel like, you know, you feel constrained in any way, but maybe the pressure is out yourself just in the daily routine. I just don't yeah. pay attention to them. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of ignore my family. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'm, here. I'm, I'm, the same. I'm the same way. <laughs> oh my God. I was just kidding, bro. Jesus Christ. No. What kind of animal are you? No. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, have... I was thinking of that, like, like, oh, oh sorry, Jonathan. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh, you oh go ahead. just, just, you know, yeah, we, we can't really talk about a lot of this with our family or friends. I, I luckily have one, one person in my vicinity who, who, you know, I can talk to, but, um, you know society and and just i i don't know it's it's it is we we know that being ourselves is all we can really be but we just have so many societal and and uh you know uh this this brainwashing that that we can't we're not right. supposed to be yourself because that's just weird, you know. But that's, that's what makes really third density weird. so great, isn't it? That's <laughs> what know? makes third density so great because <laughs> we all have to do a closed book, closed note test. There's the veil of forgetting there, and we don't remember the answers anymore. So, like you said, just being yourself is a challenge when you're getting pressures from outside that are telling you, "No, don't be yourself. <laughs> do yeah. not yeah. do that." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or your, your, yourself, you don't feel safe being yourself and all the things, right. you know, all the things that you get density yeah. presents mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah. I admire so many of our brothers and sisters who have chosen to incarnate in mm -hmm. LGBTQIA yep. plus yep. bodies. It's like that yes. challenge of being who you really feel yep. you are deep inside. That's right. Even though the rest of the world is saying no, <laughs> either yeah. you don't yes. feel that, or yeah. yeah, that's not legitimate choice. It's like wow, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Absolutely. I I think about autistic children, people who are so called mentally ill. They are being themselves in this incarnation, mm -hmm. and it's 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 so incredibly difficult for for their parents if they're children course and then just navigating through through the world mm -hmm. i have a family member who's who's been mentally ill pretty much her whole life and it's just incredible how she navigates through through the world she's she is literally an angel on this planet and it's mm -hmm. it's just amazing how she has navigated and and made it through you know and she's just herself, mm -hmm. her beautiful self, you know. So I love that. Yeah. yeah was, there is a question that uh, comes up from time to time, which is uh, are indigo children wanderers? And uh, as I think you were sort of suggesting, 
uh, Elaine. Yeah, a lot of the children that are born now seem to have ADD or autistic or something that doesn't fit in, specifically because, as our friends of the Confederation said, yeah. there are wanderers in the sense that indigo children are entities that did graduate from third to fourth density, either on this planet or another planet. But rather than continue on with their studies in fourth density, they chose to come back to third density to try to help in the transition. But that means they are dual activated, it means their bodies are wired for both third and fourth density vibrations. So this mm -hmm. often presents as somebody who's autistic or somebody who's ADD who's not fitting in with the third density world because they're not supposed to fit in the third density world. They're supposed to be helping make the way for fourth density world to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many, you know, like they said in the early 2000s, uh, Kuo said they were close to half a billion. And I can tell you right now, it's probably way more than that. I know so many. And, you know, they're amazing. So smart. It's incredibly, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. The system fails them because the system is for third density, but they're so smart. It's scary. Um, and I like it because I can see, you can see the evolution taking place for the insidious in front of your eyes. If you deny it, you know, they're doing all these studies saying, oh, it's this, that, it was vaccines. No, it wasn't vaccines, my friend. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's the four wave coming already and it's in full motion and it can be stopped. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, I did want to note that we are roughly an hour and a half in and I was assuming you guys would want to wrap this up um, like by two hours or so. So if you don't mind, I did have a couple other passages that I wanted to go through. One of them, I think, uh, responds to the question nicely that folks might ask of how do wanderers get home? How do they return home? And this is a beautiful passage that speaks to that here. Uh, May 3rd, 1992. These entities, however, have within them the dim, distant and dimly lit memory of their origin as beings from elsewhere. And in many cases, this feeling is in the form of what you may call a kind of homesickness or alienation from the planetary influences and vibrations that are of a more disharmonious nature within this third density influence. However, each entity in the heart of its being is aware that though there is a home that may be located elsewhere, that the true home of all seekers of light and servants of the one creator is within that service and within that light that comes from only one source, the one creator. And each may take solace in knowing that the creator resides within each entity and shines the light of love and service to all equally. Questioner, so you're just saying that basically home is within us, is that right? <laughs> I am Quo, and I am aware of your query, my sister, and this is correct, that the home is truly, as your people say, located where the heart is able to love. What a... <laughs> What a beautiful passage and what a beautiful gem of love and wisdom and that home is where the love of the one infinite creator is and that's where we are. Being a foreign, I'll tell you, I'm not from originally from the United States and when I grew up, things are really tough. I could say that people that chooses to be born in Canada, Costa Rica, they actually sign because it's really hard to live there. But I can tell you it's so true. I was happy when I lived there. I'm definitely really happy right now, but I was not in the best of situations. And I can tell you it just to, to me, it was like, it was difficult, you know, but I can tell you I was happy somehow deep inside. And that's the way that I'm here right now. I'm really happy as well. because I have children, you know, my family, but it, it's so true. When, when I read that, my heart just melts because I know I could be living under a bridge if I had to, and I'd still be happy. I wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so much karma, so many terrible things in the history of the area we call Latin America and Central America. Your ability to be here, I would think, is really helping with karmic healing. Uh, as well, Michelle, I'm going to put that out there and guess that incarnating in the form of a black woman in the United yeah, States at this black time. Woman. Oh, a childless <laughs> cat. Yeah. That is a gangsta move. I mean, you chose the most difficult player setting for this You're video. Brave. Yeah, You're brave. Yeah, brave, my sister. And the karma that you can be helping heal just by being who you are. 
Uh, yeah. mm. A lot of karma. A lot of karma. You know, what was really interesting, I was really, you know, thinking about wanderers and the gifts. And I would say, like, there's a range of gifts and, and abilities that they all have. And there's differences. And there is light in all of the dark places. And, you know, part of what I do is I'm a, I work at a group of amazing women that I've actually come to the conclusion that I think we created a contract to incarnate together to do this type of work that we do. And it is bringing light um, in the part of a small government system, I would say, kind of quasi government. And, um, you know, it's a little tiny light in the darkness, but I think we absolutely made a contract to do that. I, I just feel like, you know, you just got to keep at it <laughs> and vibrate high. And yeah, mm -hmm. I like James Baldwin said, like the most, disrespected individual on the planet is a black woman i i'm kind of i'm believing that and there are so many other catalysts for other folks too right like there's just humanity is all of the awesome negative things you know that we have to to grow out of on this third density planet but yeah so making light of it but i don't have cats but i love cats <laughs> um, people I, I watching this years from now have no idea what the <laughs> fuck we're talking about with the cats suffice <laughs> it to say it's a current event mm -hmm. uh, i have oh, i have yeah. three kitties so i have three kitties now so i know <laughs> <laughs> we're all cat people come on i now. love dogs too dogs, dogs, dogs. well i got four dogs then oh, oh wow <laughs> We could have a whole other podcast episode <laughs> on dogs and cats and other random second density entities. Hey, I did want to look at one more question, one more passage to go through. And then, yes, I do, in fact, have a pop quiz for you and for uh, everyone watching this. I knew it. <laughs> I really have fun writing them. And I really I have fun do. writing this fun. I was cracking myself up many times over. <laughs> so the I general question. The general question I'd like to look at is what are the risks of being a wanderer? There was a passage from July 31st, 2007. Quo said, the commitment to become a wanderer is not taken lightly. It is thought out carefully and considered for a considerable amount of your time, indeed, centuries of your time, while the commitment to the work is perfected, refined, and honed to a sharp edge. It is an act of great courage to be a wanderer. What wanderers usually do not realize is that that which is so obvious and easy from the other side of the veil is impossible to read and difficult to bear uh, within the thick veiling of the third density of earth with its free will and its extremely thick veil. The danger always is that the wanderer will not wake up, or if it is partially awake, that it will awaken only to complain that it is not comfortable, that it wants to go home, that it must leave this place that is so polluted and dirty. Something I imagine many of us can relate to. To those who feel these things, we would suggest that it is precisely because this planet is so in need of higher vibrations that you came to serve at this time to help lighten the vibrations of planet Earth. And you could not do this without incarnating and becoming one of the tribe of humankind. Your love was so great that you took that step and now you have awakened and you know how difficult a step it was to take. We encourage you to take hold of the honor and the duty of being a wanderer. That which you know of the higher planes, that which you remember in a dim or not so dim way, bring into your heart and let it bless the environment that you see before you just as it is. You are not here to clean it up. You are not here to make it right. You are not here to fix it. For all the outer world is an illusion. You are here to love it. Take the world in your arms and embrace it. This is how you came to serve. This is your glory and your crown. Wear it well and rejoice in being here. As to what occurs if wanderers do not wake up, they, like all of the human tribe, walk the steps of light. If they have learned the lessons of love in this incarnation, they are free to move on. And if so, they may choose to go back to their native density. If they have instead remained asleep within this incarnation, then they shall have a refresher course in third density living, moving with others who have not graduated to fourth density to another planet, where they shall once again become students in third density's refinery of souls. In either case, 
all is well. You have all the time in the universe to move through all natural energies and rhythms back to the creator who is waiting for you with great delight. And you do not wish to return too soon, for the creator wishes to know the fullness of your experiences, your feelings and emotions. That is the harvest that you bring to the creator. Whatever it is, he will love it and you now and forever. What? I mean, that's just beautiful as we've been mentioning. Yeah, isn't that something? Mm. Sacrifice for the creator, which is eventually yourself. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's a beautiful passage, one that I think, uh, like so many things, gives me inspiration. I think the next podcast episode we will probably do is uh, sort of a law of one, one oh one on some of the most basic concepts. And I know one of the things that people would want to know is like, how do we know this stuff is legitimate? How do we know that all these things we've been reading aren't made up from somebody's mind or aren't generated by artificial intelligence or something? But the That's thing that I the thing that really I keep topic. thinking about is, yeah, is wow, when you read what the, the stuff that we've been reading here it's like what normal human do you know who could answer these questions this way just from their own well, mind and experience i think when you have that podcast i'm sure folks people will talk about well just for me from my personal I've, i'm a seeker in journey and i've read and studied and practiced a lot of different practices and things and so I feel sometimes it's a it's a feeling and I may not be able to describe it all the time. I just get this feeling that it's um, the essence of, let's say, truth or high vibration. Um, and quote, Intu and intuition, one, you just know, I don't I, I can't explain it. You just it's your intuition. It's just yeah. your, your yeah. you know, you know, deep in you. Yeah. And I think the veil comes out in different ways. The veil lifts a little and a little and a little for for people. Some people gets ripped off and you know all the things. Like I don't I don't personally remember a ton of past lives, but I've been told about them from readings and you know, and an out of body experience I had one time and interaction with my starseed family. I feel that I just it was but now I understand what that was. Um but yeah, you just and I think I love, as, as you all mentioned, you know, take what, take what re resonates and leave the rest. If it doesn't, you know, yes. if it's not something you're feeling. Yeah. Right. That, that, that is mm -hmm. the key, I think, for someone who, who might ask, oh, con, what do you mean channeled material from mm -hmm. what, from an eat, from an extraterrestrial, what, what, <laughs> you what? know? <laughs> so someone close to me says i love the message i'm just not clear on the messenger you know <laughs> yeah. but but you read this stuff and they they say 1700 times if this doesn't resonate with you forget about it we're not yeah. here to you know impinge on your free will this yeah. is our experience we just have a little bit more experience maybe than you guys along this path and and the other thing I love about, about it is that they only respond to questions. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not coming from on high and saying, here's the truth and you mm -hmm. better obey or else you're going to burn in hellfire. You know, they only respond to questions. And if they don't understand your question, they ask you to repeat the question, please. <laughs> <laughs> so we can give you a clear answer you know to the best of our ability and it's just like that is just not human brain thinking at all you know there's the, the, it's it's clear it's crystal clear crystal there we go again love this crystal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> edgar any uh last thoughts on this before we tie a knot on it basically you know it's it's one something that you have basically to believe in yourself, just all the religious texts were channeled somehow by somebody in the past. I mean, nobody just decided to write that. That was a channel, but people don't realize, you know, all the religious texts that you have right now for different religions, they somebody channeled that because the person that wrote it didn't invent it. That just 
So this is definitely more advanced material. It goes along with the harvest, and that's why it's going to be giving you more details. Um, it's definitely going to the point, and they're telling you, this is how it is. You feel that you believe in it. Good. If you don't, we all have a different path. You can, you can believe if you want, but, you know, it's definitely going to be depending on your own evolution. So that's pretty much the way I see it also. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, Michelle, Elaine, either of you have any last thoughts before we wrap up this discussion and have a little bit of a pop quiz? Uh, just, I, I've just been thinking all along, this is so fun. <laughs> this is a blast. I love this. And yeah, Good. bring it on. Let's yeah. go. So I can get you on another episode. <laughs> oh, I would love to. I'm honored to be here. Yes, with all of you beautiful, my sister and brothers, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Honor and enjoy to be with you. <laughs> Me too, Jonathan. Same I'm here. For another round. I love it. All righty then. Well, before we get too mushy here, we have. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, we have gotten in the habit of doing little pop quizzes at the end of our little Zoom sessions, just as a way to add a little bit of extra levity and laughter to otherwise serious discussions about metaphysics and spiritual growth and evolution. So clearly the three of you know a bit about the law of one, but how much do you know about the number one? And I don't mean the mathematical number one, I'm talking about the biological function known as number one, AKA, peeing. Ah! So think of today's pop quiz, not so much as a pop quiz, but let's just call it a, a urine test, shall we? Oh my god. <laughs> a year. Oh man. Oh my god. I love it. Your urine test will consist of three questions about the biological function known as number one. See how many you can guess drinks. correctly. Oh, Those no. of you who are watching on video, you can say your answers out loud. Oh if you're still watching at this point. It'll be like watching Dora the Explorer. Uh, and as always, <laughs> the points don't matter. If you had fun, you won. Are you guys ready for your first question? Yep. Hey. All right, <laughs> first question. What is the world record for longest urination? Is it A, <laughs> seven and a half minutes, B, eight and a half minutes, or C, nine and a half minutes? Oh my God. <laughs> You do have to say your answers out loud because we're not doing this. Um, I'll say A, 7.5 minutes. Good. I'll say C just for the heck of it. Yeah, I but C. I mean, seriously, there's like a competition, right? And they measure it. Okay. I'm going for <laughs> nine and a half. Michelle, did you say uh, B? I said C. C. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is in fact B. Uh, it was about eight and a half minutes or 508 wow. seconds to be exact. Oh my but in researching this pop quiz, I only saw this in social media posts. It was not documented by the Guinness Book of World Records or any other reliable source. Uh, and in case you weren't clear on how to interpret the question for the, uh, uh, until you saw the answer options, uh, a Mr. Micah Dinkle apparently holds the record for the longest distance <laughs> peed which was 19 feet and six inches. In two awesome. hey. but this also appears only in social media posts. Uh, it is not documented by the Guinness Book of World Records, which is good. Can you imagine being the Guinness Book of World Records <laughs> rep who has to go out and like <laughs> document <laughs> this particular thing? I have a question. Yeah. Did you say, did you say this was Mr. Dinkle had the longest right. dinkle? Okay. I did. Not in those exact it. words, uh, but yeah. He, he must have brought that along with him in his incarnation just for fun. A special that name. Thing. Yeah, perfect. For sure. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready for your second question? Mm -hmm. yeah. Second question. True or false, the U.S. Army manual recommends drinking your urine if lost in the desert. True. False. Wait, it's, I think wait, that's true. true. It's true. It's true. I think, but don't you have to, though? Well, <laughs> I think you have to do something. Uh, filter it. I don't know. 
Uh, indeed, the correct answer is false. <laughs> the yeah, US Army false. Manual actually oh, specifically <laughs> advises <laughs> against it because it would be like full of salt, which yeah. would actually dehydrate. Oh, right. right. That's right. I did know that. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> Where did you know that from? I didn't, Michelle? but I watched some movie. <laughs> <laughs> dune maybe who knows i don't know yeah i was just gonna say i i thought they were doing that in dune maybe i don't know they got it from the but u.s I, military i read it it's not so yeah 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 <laughs> presumably uh, yeah. it gets saltier and saltier the longer you wait so maybe if you drank it like right away in the first 20 minutes or so you could probably get away with it but yeah, that'd be pretty bad. You've only been lost in the desert for 20 minutes and you're ready to drink your own pee already. That's got to be <laughs> oh, pretty dear. desperate. Yeah, that's torture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I will admit, uh, I do not handle stressful situations all that well. <laughs> if I was stuck in an elevator for more than 20 minutes with people, I'd probably start thinking about cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Uh, are you ready for your last question? Yeah. All right. Your last question is also true or false. True or false, peeing on a jellyfish sting will help ease the pain. Yes, true. Seems true. Okay. I'm going to go with Edgar. He's the expert. <laughs> Are you an the expert animal on expert urination no. or jellyfish <laughs> or peeing and, on jellyfish? And... <laughs> How do you know what? Uh -huh. <laughs> How do I know? Yeah. I actually got stung by one when I was a little kid and they pee on my oh. legs, so I felt awful. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, so, so it did help or it did not help? It supposedly, yeah, it did. Supposedly it neutralizes. That's what they told me. I don't know if it's true or not, but they, at least they peel. Well, my how did it feel when people were uh, peeing on you other it, than embarrassing? It, it felt awful, but it still hurt a lot. So I don't know if it was true or not. So, oh. <laughs> Is anybody a fan of the TV show Friends? Oh, yes. yeah, of course. Nobody hears it. I must Have be the watched? last. I mean... Oh, that's right. There was an episode. Yes. <laughs> I yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't watch the show. I don't think I've watched more than one episode. But in right. uh, researching this pop quiz, apparently back in 1997, there was an episode where Monica got stung by a jellyfish. Joey apparently remembered seeing a documentary <laughs> that advised uh, urinating on the screen. <laughs> so apparently they I did remember. it, and on TV it worked. But oh, wow. According to Scientific American, treating a jellyfish sting by urinating on it may actually cause even more pain because oh. the urine can actually aggravate the jellyfish's stingers and to release yeah. them more venom which i can sense. vouch for as a former high school biology teacher wow. we used to do experiments sometimes where we would get hydra which were like a little microscopic form of jellyfish we'd watch them in water and then we would put uh, some dilute acid on them. And the acid right. did cause the little stinging cells to fire all their little darts and harpoons. So since urine is acidic, yeah, it was not too surprising. Okay, well, this was illuminating. Wow. Yes. It was illuminating. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I would wow. like to think if you didn't get anything else useful out of this entire podcast, <laughs> if you got this much, I would say that was not a yes. complete waste. Uh, of I promise not to pee at the, anyone. At the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the very least, we we did get an education on this. Thank you so That's much. Awesome! My goodness. Uh, I do, <laughs> no, in fact, I have a bonus question for you. Are you ready? Oh. For a bonus? Sure. <laughs> okay. Let's okay. go for it. Your bonus question. What percent of Americans pee in the shower? Is it A, 20%, B, 40%, C, 60%, or D, 80%? Oh my God. That is disgusting, you know? That's so bad. As some uh, folks know, I specialize in inappropriate jokes. And I know. <laughs> I don't know. So, what do you think? Let's hear your answers. I'll go with 40%. 20. Yeah, I was going to say B. Yeah. Uh, according to my exhaustive 
five minute research on the subject. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is C, according to one source and D, according to another. Wow. So neither of those sources I would consider to be especially reliable sources. <laughs> so we really don't know. What we do know is how many of you pee in the shower? I will admit, I do pee in the shower pretty regularly. How about you, uh, Edgar? I don't. This is I a can't. Blu-ray question. Uh, I, 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 I can't really. Maybe occasionally if somebody's in my bathroom, I hop, but I don't really like to. <laughs> a shower. I, 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 at least yeah. for guys, you can put it like straight down the drain, so it's not really that big a deal. Right. Rinsing it down the drain. Okay. Elaine. I have a question. No, I have, no, a, question. I have a question for you. Well, no, go ahead. You no, I think that I think it's gross. And uh, no, my answer is no, because mm -hmm. uh, do I should I get it specific as to why I don't like that concept uh, of only if the you shower? Want. You have free. Work. Um, it's it's. There's only obvious, like one person but... watching this on YouTube right now, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it's watching. me in the future. No one's. Asking. Oh well. Anyway, well, I mean, you know, like I have to. I clean the bathtub, and I just, yeah, okay, but yeah, I want to ask a question. Jonathan. Wait, I want to know. So you do not pee in the shower? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Michelle. No, because yeah, no. I don't want to stand in it or you know, yeah. But it's going down the and, drain, isn't it? And you've got like uh, a ten minutes. Yeah, but but point. if there's a lot of water pooled in the bottom of the shower because I then just washed my hair and drain, a lot of I my think. hair. <laughs> 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 okay, so twenty five percent of the people on this call be in the TMI. <laughs> TMI, guys. Oh my god. Oh. Did you have a question? I, yes, I just want to know: Did you write these questions? And if so, what was your inspiration for this particular topic? <laughs> did you think of it in the shower? Ooh, I have had a lot of good thoughts come to me in the shower, but this is not one. While you were I should have said, yes, that would have been a much funnier answer. I'm going to go back and change my answer. <laughs> yeah, I thought of this one. <laughs> no, I thought about okay. looking up questions uh, about uh, the number one, like the mathematical number, but I didn't really find anything all that interesting. And I thought, who isn't interested in a good uh, urine joke? Yeah, because uh, I... I thought you were going to say podcast. name songs that have the the, the word mm -hmm. one in them, like because what came to my mind was one is the loneliest number, and yeah. you know mm -hmm. all of that kind one of stuff. But two. but yeah. no, you did not go there. So we will save that for another episode. Did you mm -hmm. have something to add, Michelle? No, I was just saying you picked number one because this is the first. Is this the first podcast oh. that you're trying out? Nice. Indeed. There you go. Okay. Indeed. Very cool. So your final question then is, do you number two in the shower? <laughs> uh, I'm going to no. guess not. If number one is out, yeah. No. Yeah, Miriam really hates no, when no. I do that. Uh, but that will be our next uh, uh, pop quiz on the number two for our future. <laughs> so let's take that for another time. Uh, any last thoughts oh, God. you want to share before we say goodbye, uh, Michelle? Uh, no last thoughts. Not right now. I will, you know, two hours from now, but, <laughs> but this was great. That's the way it always is. Yeah. I loved it. I mean, I think we could have talked for another eight hours. I'm like, Ooh, we could talk about that. There's just so much there, but it was beautiful and it was fun. So yeah, it was great. great. Yeah. Glad you Love you guys. Edgar, Thank any you. last thoughts, reflections? Uh, Thank you for including me. Had lots of fun and, you know, absolutely. Remember that everything is perfect and we just have to focus on positive and think everything is fine and it will be fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elaine, any last thoughts, yep. reflections? Just love you all. Thank you so much for this joyous, wonderful, fun time together. Yeah. Just yeah, it was fun. Awesome. That was great. <laughs> okay. It Thank has you, been Jonathan. super fun. 
after I edit it down, it'll probably be like a 10 minute video or something like that to match people's attention spans. But no, that's a good almost uh, two hours here. And it's wow. So are you going to edit? Are you going to edit it? And... Uh, as little as possible. We'll see. Oh, okay. I might edit out that question since that doesn't really. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm too lazy, so, you'll see so, it in the replay. Yeah. Oh. It's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, thank you all so much for joining. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John, you. for the invite. Thank, Elaine, thank Edgar, you. And Michelle, thank you for all you've done and continue to do in service to others. Yes. To all our friends at LNL Research, thank you for all you've done and continue to do in service to others. For all of those of you uh, watching on YouTube at a future nexus in space, time, and time space, near or Great. far, thank you for all, all right. you've done and continue to do in service to others. Until next right, time. Namaste. Thank and you. Love so and light is one infinite creator. I don't know. Namaste. Bye.